Topic is uh, acid base titration, and the question is how indicator works in this acid base titration. Okay, the question is this. So we will actually get the complete idea of the this question that how indicator is actually working in the acid base titration. Okay. So there's another question also that is actually what is actually titration? Simple. What is acid base titration called? So we will know uh, a bit more about these points in detail. But our concentration will be mainly on the how indicator works. Okay, let's get started from the very basics to this question. Acid base, we know about the acid and base, and the point is titration. What is titration for? Why do we titrate acid and base? Oftentimes, we are given with uh, two uh, substances, two things like acid and base, two chemicals. Okay, number one is acid, number two is base. Oftentimes, we are asked in exams and practical performances that uh, one of these is actually known to you and uh, one of these is actually not known to you. Consider what in our today's lecture we have base, which is actually noun. What do we mean by noun? What do we mean by noun? Very simple. If we know the concentration or normality, so this is actually called as noun. So it is actually considered as to be standard, means we know this. We know the concentration and normality. Now what we are asked is, find the concentration or normality of the acid these two things okay find it question is for you so when you are given such kind of a scene to do so how will you observe this very simple you have one which is noun you have second which is unknown mathematically we know this point if we have one value and uh, another one is not noun to us by this one value we can get the answer of the second value which is not noun so the same is the case here. Now we know the base and we don't know the acid. What is the concentration or normality of the acid? So to find this, we actually interact these together. This finding mechanism and interacting these two together is actually called as acid-based titration. In simple words, what is acid-based titration? Simple. It is a mechanism through which we identify the concentration or normality of unknown acid or a base. Simple definition. I hope it is clear. So now in our case, we know about the acid base, sorry, we don't know about the acid. What is the concentration or normality of the acid? So let's get started now with the process of acid base titration. And we'll come to this point at the end, how indicator is working. Okay. We'll take HCl hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. In our case, HCl is acid and sodium hydroxide is the base. When these two interact, what will happen? We have positive sodium and chloride negative. They will interact and will form sodium chloride and uh, OH from here, H from here will synthesize water. So this is our general reaction, okay? So now looking into this, coming towards titration. For titration, practically we need it, conical flask, stained, blah, blah, blah. What our main focus is, the thing that you know, the chemical that you know about this chemical, its concentration is down to you, its normality is down to you. That chemical you will take and you will pour that into burette. You will fill the burette with a noun. What? Noun concentration or normality. So this will be considered as your standard. So in our case, today's lecture includes sodium hydroxide as a standard. Okay? So now this is standard for us. What? Standard. By means of this, now we are going to find the concentration and normality of the sample. Now sample given to us is acid. Now we don't know what is its concentration or normality. For that, we will take this HCl as a sample and it is unknown to us. We don't know its concentration and normality. So we will put this in the conical flask. Remember always, when you're given with a sample and you don't know its concentration and normality, you will take that sample, you will put that sample in the conical flask. And the one that you know about, you will put that in the burette. Very simple. I hope it is clear. So now here we have sodium hydroxide as a standard and HCl as a sample. What you are doing is now you will start dropping the sodium hydroxide from the burette into the what? Conical flask where you have HCl. So what is happening here? Let's come here. Here we have HCl. We know charges on HCl. H positive, Cl negative. As it's available here. Along with that, we put here an indicator. Remember, we put always indicator in the sample, okay? So now here we have sample and here we will provide our indicator. So from here, just sodium hydroxide will be coming down. 
consider what we took 10 drops consider just 10 drops 10 ml of the hcl this is actually a suppose diagrammatic understanding to you guys okay don't consider drop as an ml simple we took one drop uh, 10 drops of the hydrochloric acid in the conical flask and here we have number of drops consider 100 drops here we have 100 drops here we have just now 10 drops consider so now what is happening one drop of the sodium hydroxide which is dropped into the conical flask one of the hcl will interact with the sodium hydroxide and will neutralize and they will synthesize water also so this is the way how is happening this is the chemical reaction happening here okay now is the 10th drop comes and uh, interacts with the, the last 10th drop of the hcl they again they will interact in the same way but what is remaining now is the 11th drop is coming is the 11th drop of the sodium hydroxide is coming down so here we are not left with more hcl so what is remaining here is only one thing that is now indicator available for interaction with the sodium hydroxide so all the drops are now consumed in the conical flask only one thing is remaining that is just and just indicator what is happening here that is the very point that will make you people understand about how indicator works very simple the 11th drop when it enters so it has no uh, hcl available so it has not got okay any hcl available in the conical flask so what will it do now wait a second this 11th drop of the sodium hydroxide will interact with the indicator so how will it interact we know sodium is positive hydroxyl is negative so as this 11th drop enters the indicator present inside the conical flask that will ionize that will ionize after the ionization indicator will split into positive and negative this is indicator okay positive and negative ions what will happen now very simple we know this point very well is positive so it will interact with the negative and positive and negative will interact as they interact in this point just that movement is actually uh, going to cause the color change and this is how indicator is working indicator is interacting with the next drop of the sodium hydroxide and as this indicator interacts with the sodium hydroxide at that point we identify that our reaction has got complete and now this is indicator will indicate a color change like this like this this is the chemical way how indicator is actually imparting color change now uh, consider that in our this case we had a uh, phenolphthalein as an indicator so what we are doing is as the 10th drop interacts with the 10th drop of the hcl the reaction is complete but we don't know and we come to know if we are uh, having indicator here so if the 11th drop is coming from the sodium hydroxide that 11th drop will interact with the indicator so indicator will cause uh, impart a color the color will be pink color so as the pink color appears that at that point we think and it is actually told to us theoretically and practically that this is the particular point uh, where our reaction got complete so indicator is actually telling us what the completion of the reaction how it is telling us this is the chemical way we got it all and uh, now what is remaining is so we will just take the values then those values if you are finding the normality or concentration for them we have reactions equations sorry then just we will take these values and we will put in the equations like n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 m1 v1 is equal to m2 v2 so we will get to know about whether it is concentration or the normality that's it how acid base saturation works and how indicator works hope you got if still you have confusion drop in the comment box thank you